Annette Richmond. Welcome to Content Marketing School, where we will dive into content marketing strategies specifically for coaches, consultants, and entrepreneurs. Discover how effective content marketing can elevate your brand and grow your business. And if you enjoy the show, don't forget to hit that follow button. If you're not creating and sharing content on social media because you don't know what to say, you are not alone. That is one of the most common reasons people say that they're not creating and sharing content. I did a poll on LinkedIn a little over a week ago asking people why they were not creating and sharing content. The majority of respondents, 33% of them said that they were not creating content because they didn't know what to say. That was followed closely at 28% by the fear of being judged. People are afraid of what people are going to think about what they share, the content they share on LinkedIn. And the final response that I gave them was feeling awkward on camera. And 22% of people said, you know, that's me. I'm uncomfortable on camera. And I will certainly be talking about being judged and being uncomfortable on camera in other episodes of this podcast. But for today, let's talk about how to come up with things to say for your social media content. So today I am going to share 10 content ideas that you can modify based on your business or your situation. The first one is business mistakes. Share an example of something that you did that didn't quite turn out the way you expected or just something that you wish you had already learned. If you've had that problem, chances are other people have as well. One of my biggest business mistakes was not being strategic with my time on social media. I was someone who would go on to LinkedIn and start scrolling around and fall down one of those rabbit holes. I did that on other social media as well. So now when I go on, I go on with a strategy. Do I want to comment or am I going to look for new people to connect with? So that was one of my mistakes. Number two on the list is talking about business events. It might be an event that you are planning to attend or maybe one that you recently attended. So you might want to talk about why you registered, if you're planning to go to an event, if there's a particular speaker there that you're interested in hearing. If you've already been to an event, you might want to share some things that you learned. Number three is to share some time savers. I mean, who doesn't want to save time? So you can share platforms or processes, maybe things that you found or a process that you've put in place yourself that is helping you save time. I know for me, uh, batching content on Canva is one of the biggest time savers that I have. Number four on my list is sharing either inspirational or motivational stories, things that may inspire or motivate others to take action. One of my favorite stories is talking about dropping out of college during my first semester and then going back later and completing my degree in chunks while working full time. And I tell that story in the hopes to inspire someone who is looking at doing something that they feel is going to take them more than a few weeks or even a few months, but a number of years and realizing that they can tackle it if they just do it bit by bit. Number five, one of my favorites is how to content teach people how to do something by sharing directions. You can do that in a text post, a status update where you go step by step through the process. Showing somebody how to do something online lends itself very well to videos. So if you are wanting to get started with videos, you might want to start with how-to content. Number six is sharing book reviews or book recommendations. Bonus if it maybe was written by a colleague or a friend of yours. 
most consultants, entrepreneurs are constantly looking for ways to increase their skills. Personal, professional development, I know, is high on my list. So if you have read a book that has helped you in your business, chances are it will help someone else. So those are some of the things that you can share on social media. Number seven is behind the scenes information or BTS as some people call it. You know, people are always curious about us, about you, potential clients, current clients are interested to see behind the scenes. So that might be some pictures of you working in your office or perhaps a video tour of your office or whatever space that you work in. People are curious, so give them a peek. Number eight is myth busting. Myth busting is another great way to share content. One of the things that a lot of people think, a friend of mine was working with a coach and just mentioned to me that the coach told her that she needed to publish content on LinkedIn seven days a week. There was a whole school of thought, 365 day challenges a few years ago. But the truth is, it's most important to be consistent, not to be posting seven days a week. So if you have something that you have learned like that, that is great to share. Number nine is something that I see often on LinkedIn, particularly is doing a month or a week recap. You can talk about the wind you've had, maybe some things that haven't quite gone your way. If you've gone to events or worked with an interesting client, doing a little recap. This is what happened in the month of November. This is what went well. This is what didn't. You can do that for a month. You can do that for a week. And it's one of those things that you can repeat over and over again. The final content idea I have, number 10, is to use themes. Now, using themes for different days of the week can also help you put together your content strategy um, and your content calendar. So there are many examples that people use. For example, Motivational Monday, Tips Tuesday, Wisdom Wednesday, Throwback Thursday, and Fun Friday, or you can create your own. I've been doing Metrics Monday. If you have themes and set them in your content calendar, it will help you create content for various days of the week and will help you be more consistent in your content creation. The bonus tip that I have for you today is something that I learned uh, myself while doing a training. If you think that you don't know what to say, you just have no idea, turn on a recorder. It can You can get an app, a free app to use on your phone. If you have Zoom, which is free for up to 40 minutes, I think, you can set that up and record it and just talk about your area of expertise. For example, I might talk about content marketing or content marketing strategy. And just talk and say whatever comes into your head and keep talking for, you know, 10 to 15 minutes or so, and then stop it and download a transcript. You can pull out tidbits from the transcript to be the basis for a status update, or it might be a blog post. It might be something that you use to create a video. And then you will have information that you can draw on for probably at least a couple of weeks of content. And the final thing I want to add, because people worry that not only do they have nothing to say, but they have nothing original to say. And the truth is, Mostly everything has already been said, but it hasn't been said by you. It hasn't been said from your perspective, your knowledge, and your background and experience. So don't 
let thinking that you have nothing original to say stop you. So let's get creating content. Thanks for tuning into The Content Marketing Show with me, Annette Richmond. If today's insights have inspired and resonated with you, please share this episode. And if you haven't already, hit the follow button to keep learning and growing with us.